This is the first video on shapes of molecules and ions where I'm going to go through electron pair repulsion theory and then show you how to determine the shapes of molecules where only bonding pairs of electrons are present. So, electron pair repulsion theory tells us that the shape of a molecule is determined by the arrangement of electron pairs around the central atom in that molecule and that these electron pairs can be either bonding pairs or lone pairs. So to determine the shape of a molecule there are a few things that we need to do. So firstly we need to work out how many bonding pairs of electrons there are and this is quite simple because that will be the same number, uh, the same as the number of atoms joined to the central atom in the molecule. For example, if the central atom is bonded to two other atoms, then there will be two bonding pairs of electrons present. Secondly, we need to determine whether or not there are any lone pairs of electrons. So to do that, we need to check what group in the, peri in the periodic table the central atom is in. And uh, the examples I'm going to go through in this video won't have any lone pairs. So we don't need to worry about that just yet, but I will be covering uh, molecules with bonding pairs and lone pairs in my next video on shapes of molecules and ions. And then finally, um, we then arrange the electron pairs to produce the minimum amount of repulsion between them. Okay, so now I'm going to go through examples um, on how to determine the shapes of molecules when we have only bonding pairs of electrons present. So firstly, beryllium chloride, BeCl2, it's a covalent molecule, and we can draw out the dot and cross diagrams for this. And if we look in the periodic table, we see that beryllium is in group 2, and it's also bonded to two chlorine atoms, and so it's got two bonding pairs of electrons. There are no lone pairs present, which means that the shape of this molecule is linear and the bond angle is 180 degrees. That's because the chlorine atoms are positioned in such a way that there's the lowest repulsion between the bonding pairs of electrons. And we can also say that the bonding pairs repel each other equally. Second example, BF3, which is again covalent and boron is in group 3 in the periodic table and it's bonded to three fluorine atoms and so it's got three bonding pairs of electrons and no lone pairs. So the shape of this molecule is trigonal planar where the bond angle is one, 120 degrees. So like with the previous example um, the fluorine atoms are positioned in such a way that there's the lowest repulsion between the bonding pairs of electrons and again the bonding pairs are repelling each other equally. Next example, CH4, methane. There's four bonding pairs of electrons that are all repelling each other equally and so the shape of this is tetrahedral and the bond angle is 109 degrees. Uh, one thing to point out with this is that the wedged bond means that uh, it's pointing out from the plane of the paper and the dashed bond means it's pointing away and then the usual single bonds are in the plane of the paper and that's how we show uh, molecules in 3D when we draw them. So next example, PF5, so there's five bonding pairs of electrons that are all repelling each other equally, and so the shape of this molecule is trigonal by pyramidal. And I'm trying to show, show this um, in 3D, so uh, the FPF bond in the middle, uh, those just aligned so that uh, it's linear and then there are three other fluorine atoms around the centre arranged in a triangular shape and there's two different bond angles and so the first one's 90 degrees and the ones between the fluorines in the triangular uh, 
uh, the triangle shape is 120 degrees. So just imagine that we've got two triangular based pyramids that are joined together uh, at the base. Last example, SF6. So the six bonding pairs of electrons that are all repelling each other equally. And so the shape of this molecule is octahedral, where the bond angle is 90 degrees. And so for this one, if we just imagine that we've got two square-based pyramids that are joined together at the base. You might have noticed that those last two examples, PF5 and SF6, um, the phosphorus and the sulfur uh, have more than eight electrons in the outer energy levels. And that's allowed because both phosphorus and sulfur are in the third period in the periodic table, and so which means that the outer energy levels can accommodate anything up to 18 electrons. And note that we can't form uh, NF5 because nitrogen is only in the second period in the periodic table, so its outer energy level can only have a maximum of 8 electrons which are held in S and P sublevels.